Happy Mother's Day, all the mothers in the house. Yes, yes, we salute you today. I am convinced that there is no harder job on the planet than being a mother. And so we salute you on today, and we, we can't imagine all the things that you have to go through and have to deal with, but we thank you so much for the gift uh, that you are. Uh, and for those of you who are mothers to people that you didn't even birth, we appreciate you. The world needs mothers and mother figures. So happy Mother's Day to all of you. We love you. We thank God so much for you. Uh, we're yet praying for those of you that this is not the easiest day for you. Uh, you may be a mother, but yours may not be here. So we are praying for you and lifting you up and let you know uh, that you are loved on today. Uh, so we throw our loving arms around you and we lift you up and we encourage you. As a matter of fact, let me pray. Father, we thank you now for the privilege to cover every person who has mixed emotions on today. Their heart is excited to be alive, but their heart is also in remembrance of the one that brought them into this world. And I pray, oh God, that you would give them strength like none other that reaches to them not just ontologically or atmospherically, but in eight. I pray, God, that you would allow for your love and your presence to fill and saturate their hearts on today and remind them that you will be with them always, never to leave them, never to forsake them. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, clap your hands one more time today. Yay, yay. Glad to be in the service one more time. All right, all right. Our children's church workers are here. And so all of our children, 12 and under, if you would like to participate in children's church, parents, if you would like for them to be a part of it, by all means, send them on over now so that they can learn about Jesus on a level they can understand. Let's thank God for our babies and our children's church workers. If you missed church after I was last Sunday, anybody was for here for the after party last week, God blessed our spirits uh, after the cameras went off um, because I believe that he allowed for a sweet anointing to fall in this place and not just in this place, but on individuals um, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Thank you so much. The Holy Spirit um, spoke deep down in my heart, um, and I'm grateful for it. Uh, no attribute to myself at all, but only to the workings of the Holy Spirit that we are blessed. I just want you to just look around the room for just a moment. Just look around. Look at the people that are in this room. Look at, look at your surroundings. We are surrounded by some of the most spiritual and successful people that God has ever placed on the planet. See, that y'all don't know when to thank God. Y'all don't know when to. Nah, I'm, I'm going to help y'all. Pastor going to help you. When I speak something, I don't just speak it to be speaking it. It is spoken for you to receive it. So even when you look at your life and you don't see it, you don't live your life based upon what you see. You live your life based upon what God sees in you, what God sees about you. So I'm going to try this again. We have some of the most spiritual and successful people. If you ain't going to be one of them, I'm going to be saved and paid in Jesus' name. Who feel like I feel? I'm going to be spiritual, but I'm going to know how to handle my business. I'm going to know how to take care of my needs. I'm going to know how to manage what it is that God has given to me. And we are surrounded by that because he wants to give us those things 
uh, that pertain unto life and to godliness. You know, the problem at your cousin them church, when I be going over there sometimes, they be, they be making me mad sometimes um, because <laughs> God wants to give us everything that pertains to life and to godliness. The problem is most people want you to have things that pertain to godliness, but they don't want you to have the things that pertain to life. They want you to have the things that pertain to godliness, but not necessarily the things that pertain to this natural life, meaning that um, they want you to be holy and they want you to be righteous, but they don't want you to have nothing else. You know, ain't, ain't it funny? People want you to be like Jesus as long as it's to their advantage. <laughs> but then the moment it's something that's not to their advantage, who you think you is, Jesus? <laughs> because they want you to have the things that pertain to godliness, but not necessarily the things that pertain to life. And I would just want to speak over your life that you will have all things that pertain unto godliness as well as this life. In Jesus' name. I feel that in my soul. I feel that in my soul. I feel that in my soul. So look at somebody next to you and say, neighbor, I want you to know I'm not like all your other friends. I really want God to bless you. Amen. Look back at him and tell him you're doing good to be sitting next to me because I'm a real friend. And when I see God blessing you, I'm going to rejoice with you. I just got one request. When my season comes, I want you to shout for me like I'm shouting for you. Snoop said, it ain't no fun unless my homies get some. I want everybody connected to me. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. So... When, when, when you get your Escalade, I'm going to be happy. When I get my Navigator, I want you to say, Pastor, God been good to you too, in Jesus' name. I, when you get your five-bedroom, I'm going to be rejoicing. When I land my pad, I want you to be happy for me too. Amen. You got to say that because we don't mind the saints being blessed. Just don't let the preacher get nothing. <laughs> like something wrong with that, in Jesus' name. But we are thankful to God uh, for his blessings on our lives. All right. Let's go to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. No, no, no. That ain't right. Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. Matthew 15. And we're going to start at verse number 21. And when you find it, please stand on your feet because we are going to read this one together, if you don't mind. I want you to get some circulation in you. Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. All the ladies in the house, you're so sharp this morning. It just look, just look beautiful. It's just most beautiful. Most, be most beautiful. <laughs> but it has received it. So we're going to start at verse 21 and go down through verse number 28 from Matthew chapter 15. And we are in the King James Version of the Bible. All right. So if I stop reading, look at your neighbor and say, keep reading. Just keep, keep reading. All right, seven or eight verses. Matthew 15, starting at verse 21. Ready? Read. Then Jesus went thence. And departed unto the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, verse 22, a woman of Canaan. Thou son of David. Mm hmm. It's grievously vexed. But he answered her and besought him, saying, But he answered and said, Then came she. 
But he answered and said, And she said, Truth, Lord. Final verse. From that very hour, remain standing. I want to pray with you. Father, as we enter into this word, I pray your special anointing on it that your word would also enter into us. Bless now this food that we are about to receive, that it will bring nourishment to our spirit as only you can give it. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to preach for just a few moments from this thought. I want to talk about a concerned mother. A concerned mother. In honor of Mother's Day, I want to give this one to you and just sort of drop it in your spirit. I want to talk about a concerned mother. Say that with me. A concerned mother. You know what this text teaches me early on? Is that women in general, but specifically mothers, I just want to point this out. Y'all are the most, I feel overdressed for this sermon, but y'all are the most beautiful yet gangster, <laughs> relentless, tenacious warriors. Get your beautiful all at the same time. This text is tailored to teach us that. Because if you ever want to get a mother excited and or mad, all you got to do is mess with her children. Fathers, we, 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 we get a little moved, but when something is going on with your baby, you, 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 you go to bat like it ain't nothing else in the world. It's beautiful. And, and I'm going to go on and say this since I'm out here. It don't matter what kind of child that child is. I, it doesn't matter if he's affluent and aristocratic made straight A's in school, or, or if, if, he, if he out there. If he out there and, and doing his thing and all the stuff you raised him up on, he is far from it right now. If he ever gets in trouble, you find yourself going to bat for him. S sometimes even going behind your husband or the father's back. Don't you get that boy another dime and as soon as he's in trouble, come on by here at 2.30, your daddy won't be here. <laughs> I ain't know. <laughs> Don't help him, whatever it is. But there is something on the inside of you that says, that something came from the inside of me that will not allow me to turn my back on what God brought out of me. Something like that in this text is tailored to teach us, and I, I, I need you to, to get this because where Jesus is, he's in a place, get this, and make a mental note of this, where he has told his disciples never to enter. Don't go there. He enters, verse 21, 22, the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And Jesus has told his disciples in times past, don't, don't ever go there. And the reason that he has told them not to go there is because of the spiritual decay that is happening in the coast of Tyre and Sidon. This is critical. Please don't miss this. He's telling them don't go there because Jesus knew that there was something 
diabolical and demonic that his disciples could not handle. Please get this because this is what I love about God and it teaches us a lesson and it is this. Please make sure you get this. No matter how spiritual you are, God knows your limitations. There are some things that, quite frankly, you just can't handle. And many times we tackle the issue of going into places because we finally saved now. And we tackle the issue of going places because we've been to church a few times where we've learned a few verses now. And we feel like there are areas that we can go into. Some places that we've, we've visited before, some things that we've done before. And God has changed us, but we ain't completely transformed. We've been changed a little bit, but we have not been completely transformed. This is going to hit somebody because you, you, you were in some places and you finally decided I can't live like this no more I can't do this no more and then when you made the cardinal error of going back to those same places again you thought that you were strong enough to handle that place you thought that now you could be a headlight instead of being a tail light, only to find out that you had been delivered but not all the way it's quiet in this Presbyterian church but you thought that you were going to go back and be the influence but now you became influenced you said, I ain't, finna, I ain't finna get high like that no more. But then you got around high people, and before you knew it, you were on the cloud. Yeah, you said, I ain't going to drink like that. I ain't going to get drunk no more. But before you knew it, you, you had become chocolate wasted all over again because you thought that you could be the influence, but you had actually become influenced. This is why Jesus says to his disciples, don't ever go there. Because I don't want you to make the mistake of thinking that you have enough power in and of yourself to handle what's happening in that particular area. I don't know who I'm preaching to in this room, but can you thank God for all the times that he warned you and protected you from the stuff that you thought you could handle? Man, if I had time, I'd preach to you and talk to you about all the people you thought you could handle, all the stuff you thought you could handle, all the situations that you thought you could handle. But here's the good news of God, that when I can't handle it, it never prevents him from being able to handle it. So he goes into the coast of Tyre and Sidon, and when he gets there, he runs into this Greek Syrophoenician woman. This Greek Syrophoenician black woman who is unsaved. And she comes out and she has never come to Jesus at all. But today she says, O oh Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. C can I tell you what a concerned mother looks like? Write this down if you're taking note. A concerned mother is a changed mother. A changed woman. She's changed. She's changed. All right, y'all looking at me in that tone of voice. Let, let's keep it 100 today. Um, some of you, the best thing that ever happened to you was your child. Your firstborn. Your children. It was the best thing that ever happened to you. Some of y'all grew up around some young ladies, and you saw them at first, and you were sitting there like, I, I don't know what my neighbor going to do with this one. <laughs> don't look at me like you ain't never met nobody like that that you ever questioned. You, you, not just your neighbor, you looked at your sister's children. I said, my sister ain't doing nothing. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen with this one. But then, but then, one day we found out they were pregnant. We found out a baby was on the way. And lo and behold, when the baby came, a fire came upon them. And they looked at them and something clicked on them. And, 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 and that young lady that used to be immature doing any and everything under the sun, all of a sudden she settled down. She started taking care of her responsibilities. Why is that? Because a concerned mother will become a changed mother. Because when you are concerned about your children, since y'all looking at me in that tone of voice, it's some stuff that you will stop doing 
for the sake of your baby. I don't know who I'm preaching to in this room, but, but it's some ways you used to live and some things that you used to do. You know you used to tear the club up. You were the first one in there and the last one to leave. But when your baby came, you said, baby, I can't hang out with y'all like I used to no more because I got to work now and Similac calls, you understand? And Pampers ain't free and I, I had to change. Where is the change in this text? Because P.W., I don't see where she changed. That's because you ain't reading it right. I just told you that she's a Greek Syrophoenician woman, which means she ain't saved. She ain't nowhere near the church. Her name ain't on the roll. She's not a tither. She doesn't participate in ministry. She doesn't know church semantics. She doesn't even own a Bible. But when she really got in trouble, her usual way of life shifted because she finally understood that if I'm going to get help for my baby, I can't raise her by myself. I need something bigger than me. I need something stronger than I am. I need something that my, that my eyes have not seen and that my ears have not heard. I don't know who I'm speaking to in this room, but I wonder, is there any mother in this room that ever had to humble herself and admit, I can't handle this by myself? There are some things that I can do with, with my relentlessness. I, I know how to take $20 and stretch it for a whole week. I, I know how to take a few dollars and, and get some noodles. And I know how to get some beanie weenies. I know what it is for us to survive. But when I really get in trouble, there is something that I can't do that I need to go to somebody that's higher than I am. When you become concerned, you'll change. When you become concerned, you used to drink, but when you got something inside of you, you can't do that no more. You used to cuss a lot, but when your baby in the room, children are around, we, we can't do that now. Because a concerned mother will change her way. She will change from her fun to now operate in her favor. I see that in the text. She ain't nowhere near the church. Please don't get it twisted. Please don't get it twisted. Just because you're not in the church don't mean that God won't help you. Who am I preaching to in this room? Just because you, you don't sit amongst the saints, it doesn't mean that God won't help you. God will help you if you want to be helped. And she calls out to him and says, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Can I tell you what I really think? Can I tell you what I really think? I think that she has gone through some stuff in her life. Watch this. And she probably, Tudor, would have never come to Jesus. The only thing that made her come to Jesus is the fact that what she was dealing with was something concerning her baby. Mm -hmm. You see, that's the reason why it's some people that can do some stuff to you and they can say some things to you. And you just let it, you know, roll off your back. You let it go in one ear and out the other. But when it comes to your baby, you say, baby, the buck stops here. I'm looking at some women in this room right now. If somebody do something to your child, you'll be right up there at the school. You, you, man, you'll cuss out the principal, the teacher. You'll be fighting a sixth grader and everything. I wish you would put your hands on my baby. Somebody looking at me right now saying I'm a living witness. She was changed. If you're concerned about your baby, you'll change some ways. If, if you care about your children, you'll change some ways. When you, when you love your children, you don't bring different people in and out of your house. That's what you did before you had them. But you, you, you don't introduce everybody to your child. Because you're not sure if their stay is going to be long term. And you don't want to traumatize your baby to the point that they don't know who to call daddy. 
I, I'm saying when, when, when you're a concerned parent, you will change your ways. You, you'll change your habits. You, 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 you become more careful about what you allow your children to experience in your presence. You'll be more careful about what you allow them to hear come out of your mouth when you're concerned about them. When you're concerned about them, you will teach them. You will train them. You will prepare them and let them know what is to come down the road. When you are a concerned parent, you will change your ways. Somebody ought to throw up your hands and shout, I change my ways. She goes to Jesus, which is something she has never done before because I ain't never needed him this deep. And when she comes to him, here's what she says. Here's what she says. This messed me up right here, Miss Bunny. I told you she ain't saved, right? She unsaved woman. She ain't gave her life to Jesus. But it's funny. When she greets him, she says, oh, thou son of David. Son of the living God. Watch this. Creator and sustainer of all life. Thou who is able to do anything but fail. Oh, she greeted him with the greeting as if she had met him on the Damascus Road. <laughs> Watch this. Do you know what this tells me? You know what this tells me? Number two, if you're taking note, she was a contrite mother. Yeah, she wasn't just changed, but she was contrite. Get this, because although she had never met him, she had heard of him and said, listen, I'm going to take what I have learned about him and I'm going to greet him properly. Watch this, especially since I know I don't deserve nothing from him. All right, let me get up here and say this. Let me get up here and say this. Let me get up here and say this. Stop coming to Jesus when you ain't never came to Jesus as if he owes you something. That, that, that's why when you come in, some of you, you know, you, you a holy roller all the time and you've never done anything wrong. But for the few of us that know that we did some stuff that we shouldn't have done, when we enter his gates, we do it with thanksgiving and we come before his course with praise. I may not know you like everybody else know you. I may not all, know all them scriptures that the preacher be calling now or the songs that the choir be singing. But one thing I do know, I stand in need of something and I believe that you're able to give it to me. So I'll say Oh, thou son of David, thou who can do anything but fail, creator and sustainer of all life. She came before him with a contrite spirit. She acknowledged him and she said, have mercy on me. Somebody has never said, have mercy on me before. And the only people that never say have mercy are the people who don't understand how messed up they are. Because mercy is when God withholds from me the justice that I really do deserve. Grace is when God gives me what I don't deserve. But mercy is when God withholds from me something that I really do deserve. Okay, y'all looking at me in that tone of voice and y'all making me feel some kind of way. Because you're acting as if that God has never withheld from you something that you really did deserve. The truth is, as many times you've been late for work, they should have fired you. The only reason you still clocking in, somebody shout mercy. Mm-hmm. 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 You, you've eaten enough of the wrong food in your life to have all kinds of diseases, but you ain't got it. Somebody shout mercy. I ran through enough red lights in my life to have more tickets than you can count. You ain't going to believe me when I tell you this. You ain't going to believe me when I tell you. ain't going to believe me when I tell you this. But I have been driving fast enough in my car to have gotten tickets. You ain't going to believe me. But in my crazy driving days, I would drive past the police. I saw a state trooper look at me and shake his head. Should have got pulled over. Somebody shout mercy. 
You did enough crazy stuff in the streets while you were clubbing and they got the shooting. You did enough crazy stuff for a bullet to have hit you. But when you checked yourself, it wasn't no holes in you. Somebody need to shout mercy. You shot enough stuff up in your veins and snorting enough stuff in your nostrils to be gone right now. But you ought to look at three people and shout mercy, mercy, mercy. That's what she said. She said, have mercy on me. Now, here's my question. She's a contrite mother. Here's my question. Why would she say have mercy on me when the devil had her daughter? Why you got to have mercy on me? If anything, I would say have mercy on my baby. Have mercy on my child. Can I tell y'all a secret? You ain't going to want to hear this. Some of y'all been praying for your children when you need, really need to be praying for yourself. Because some of the stuff that's wrong with your kids is your fault. I'm not coming back to this church anymore. Well, you're going to get this truth before you leave. She didn't say have mercy on my baby. She said have mercy on me. All I'm saying is you can't get mad at Kwee for being on the phone at midnight. And then she turned around and hear the doorbell ring at 2. Because sometimes the only issue is the apple didn't fall. Why are you trying to raise a saint but you an ain't? So she said, Lord, have mercy on me. I brought my child up in this environment. I taught some stuff to my baby that I thought was cute. You taught her how to back it up and look back at it and all that kind of stuff. Come on, do it, baby. Do it like this. Do it like this. Turn the music on. Watch it. Do it like this. It was cute at four, but when she was 14 and mastered it, You ought to be saying, Lord, have mercy on me. Some of our kids learn how to cuss from us. Slap him. Call him this. And instead of saying, you need to go in there and pray, you need to be saying, Lord, have mercy on me. Some of their experiences are a reflection of our intellect. We need to be saying, Lord, have mercy on me. She came to him and said, Lord, help me. She ain't never done this before, Miss Tab. The text says she came and worshipped him. She's contrite. Lord, Lord, help me. She, she, she has remorse. She has guilt because she understands my baby is facing something right now and I am responsible for it. I failed to teach her. Now the devil has my baby because I opened her up to the environment. Why are you shouting? While you're dancing, hey, glory. While you're respected at the church, your child has no connection to what they see in church, but they are connected to what they see at the house. But she was contrite. And here's the part that got me before I give you point number three. Then we're going to raise up. When Jesus first sees her, he doesn't say a word. As a matter of fact, the disciples said, Lord, send her away, for she crieth after us. Now, see, I ain't like that part. This ain't what I came to preach. If I was preaching another part of this passage, I would say to you that this is a clear-cut case of those who surround the man of God thinking that they are more important than the man of God. Because they say, send her away, Mrs. Kelly, for she crieth after us. 
I read the text while y'all was reading it, and I didn't see her call none of their names. She crying after us. She ain't called Matthew. She ain't called John. She ain't called Peter's name. May God deliver you from people who think that they are more important to your life than they really are. Ain't nobody called you. Ain't nobody call you. Sometimes people come on, talk to the, I am the deacon of this church. Ain't nobody call deacon so-and-so. I am the trustee. Ain't nobody call trustee so-and-so. It's a clear-cut case of them thinking that they are more important or as important as the man of God, which is Jesus himself. But when she comes to him, the Bible says she said not a word. He said not a word. He offered her not a word. And ain't nothing worse than coming to God as messed up as you are, needing the help that you need. And he don't say nothing. I know some of y'all are deep and spiritual, and every time you call him, something happens immediately. I've been preaching 25 years, and there's been some times that I prayed, Miss Bunny, he ain't say yes. He didn't say no. I would have taken that. He didn't say wait. He said nothing. It's some stuff that I prayed about years ago. Still ain't heard nothing. But because she was a concerned mother, get this, she didn't accept no for an answer. When you really get concerned, watch this. If you tried the first time and it don't work, you do it again. You ought to look at somebody and tell them, try again, try again. I, I tried going to church and that didn't help. You just went once. Maybe God said, I, I enjoy the fact that you're coming, so I'm going to wait to speak to you because if I speak too soon, you'll stop coming. She was contrite. She was remorseful. And then when Jesus did finally speak, it's in your Bible if you didn't tear it off. Here's what Jesus said. It's not right for me to take the bread off the children's table and give it to dogs. Boy, I'm looking at some of y'all. If Jesus had said or anybody had said, it's not right for me to take the bread of the children and give it to dogs, referring to my baby, I'm going to show you who a dog is. I'll bite your face off right now. Who you think you calling her? Who do you think? What, who do you think you're talking to? Baby, I know you ain't talking to me like that. You must not know who I am. No matter who you is, you ain't stronger than God. Look at somebody like you serious and tell them, ain't nobody scared of you. You ain't the only one that can get an attitude. You ain't the only one that can move your finger and shake your head and, you know, say what you're going to do to somebody. You can't fight. What? 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 I ain't never ran from. <laughs> sure ain't about to pick the day to start running. You understand? Know about scared. Watch this. While you're asking the question of who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Here's the real question. Who do you think he is? I'm preaching better than y'all receiving today. That's why I knew this mother had changed. Because the average person would have said, okay, see, now you're being disrespectful. You're being rude. Now, that's offensive. Listen, when you really get in trouble, you don't always have the privilege of getting people to respond how you want them to respond when you need their help. Mm. I knew she was changed. I knew she was contrite because when Jesus said it's not right to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs, instead of her getting an attitude, instead of her saying, who do you think you're talking to like that? You must not know where I'm from. You must not know what I'll do to you up in here. You must not know what time it is before you start taking off your earrings and kicking your shoes off and pulling out your Vaseline. Baby, come on, what? What, before you start turning around, what? 
She said, you're right, Lord. <laughs> Imagine a sister who hears an inconvenient truth and says, I receive that. I take that. You're right. I don't deserve it. You're right. I, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't never prayed before. I ain't never prayed to tell you thank you. I, I'm just praying, saying help me. I, I get it. I get it. I get it. I ain't never came to church before. I get it. I've never accepted you before, and here I am asking you for something. I, I really, I really don't deserve. I come to you more than I give, so I don't deserve anything. This is the thing right here that blessed my life. I'm finna get happy if y'all sit there and look at me. She said, "You right, but even the dogs." Eat the crumbs that fall from the master table. Watch this. Watch this. Let, let me exegete this. You thought that when he referenced her as a dog, that she was going to take it in the negative. She said, um, you don't understand. You just called me something that's really a privilege because they say dog is a man's best friend. Which means I may be a dog, but I'm your dog, dog. <laughs> I'm going to get happy by myself. Some of y'all would have went out the room. Like, I know you ain't calling me no dog, but it's a good side to be on a dog. Bow, wow, wow, you be oh, you be yeah. Because here's what it is. Because what, what would happen in the custom is the master would sit at the table and the master would eat. And the master would eat his meat or he eat his bread. And a lap dog would simply come to where he is and just sit there and look. Not asking you for what's in your hand. But if anything falls to the ground, that's mine right there. S sometimes, in order to get a blessing, you got to make up in your mind, I don't mind being a lap dog. Because all the lap dog has to do is while the master is eating, if he just sit there and open up his mouth, everything that falls from the master's table would just fall in the mouth of the dog. All I'm trying to tell you is, is when your praises go up, I'm a dog, but I'm your dog. And she didn't get an attitude. And when she makes this profound proclamation, said even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Here it is, number three. She became a complimented woman. A complimented mother. Watch this. A concerned mother will make some changes. She'll be contrite. Third and finally, God will compliment her. You didn't see it in the text and you read, you read it. You didn't see it. You didn't see it. I'm going to show it to you. When this woman makes this statement and comes before him and worship him, Jesus said, oh, 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 girl, 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 you know. I wasn't going to do this. I wasn't gonna, I'm going to have to go and bless you. He says to her, Oh, woman, great is thy wallet. Oh, woman, great is thy intellect. Oh woman, great is thy beauty. He says, Oh woman, great is thy faith. All right, turn up moment. The greatest compliment that God can ever give to you as a mother is not the compliment 
on how good you look or how great you cook or how well you can do it. Y'all too holy. I'm going to start another church next week. I did it before. I'll do it again. He says, oh, woman, great is your faith. The greatest compliment that you will ever receive from God is, oh, woman, great is your faith. I don't care how much money you got while you on your grind trying to make your paper boo-boo. By all means, make your paper boo-boo. But he'll never tell you, oh, woman, great is your bank account. Going back to school, getting your degrees, hey, by all means, make it do what it do with your smart self. But he'll never tell you great is your degree. As a matter of fact, you can have more degrees than a thermometer. He'll never say great are your degrees. Great is your cooking. A lot of folks can cook. Jim and Nick's does a great job. I can iron clothes real good. So can deluxe cleaners. I can wash. So can the washer. If you really want to be complimented by God, watch this. Track him down when you can't trace him. Because the woman never met Jesus. She didn't know Jesus but look at somebody and tell them, she found Jesus. <laughs> when her baby was in trouble, she found a way to get to Jesus. And he says to her, great is your faith. Watch this. I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which literally means that you are not covered under the policy. Only those that I've been called to can receive these kind of blessings. You are not covered under the policy. But here's what Jesus did. Baby, since you worship me like you worship me, and since you came to me the way that you came to me, and since you came to me and it took a whole lot of guts for you to come to me because the people that you run with ain't saved, but you left your familiar company to come to see me, and then you came to me with an humble, contrite spirit. You didn't come to me like I owed you something. You didn't come to me like you deserved a miracle or a blessing. As a matter of fact, when I said that it is not me to take the children's bread and to give it to the dogs, I really thought you were going to come back with an attitude with me, but you looked at me and said, Truth, Lord, and since you did all of that, Woman, great is your faith, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bless you under the table. <laughs> Even the dogs eat the crumbs that falls from the master's table. So when she speaks that and God hears that, he says to her in essence, I'm going to bless you under the table which means you didn't qualify for it, you didn't deserve it but the way you came to me as a mother, understanding that your, your daughter was grievously vexed with the devil I'm going to bless you in such a way get this, that by the time you get home Whatever you prayed for, it will not be denied. I want you to look at somebody like you're concerned for your future, like you're concerned for your babies. Look at them and tell them it ain't over yet. It ain't over till God says it's over. Don't you dare tell me what my God won't do for me. Just because I don't sing like you sing, just because I don't read the Bible like you read the Bible, it's one thing I know how to do. I know how to beg. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and tell him I ain't too proud to beg. Going through the kind of stuff that I've been going through, I need God to do me a favor. What did Jesus do? He went to hell for her. How do you know that Jesus went to hell for her? The Bible says that she was grievously vexed with a devil. Which means that if Jesus is going to cast out the devil, he's got to go to the place where the devils reside. And Jesus went to hell on her behalf. And said, loose her and let her go. 
Because if this mother is crazy enough to trust me, then I'll be crazy enough to come through for her. If she's bad enough to worship me, then I'll be bad enough to do warfare for her. Look at your neighbor if you ain't too scared. And tell them, neighbor, if you don't put nothing in, you ain't going to get nothing out. That's the reason why I made up my mind that come hell or high water, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No, help I know if thou withdraw thyself from me, tell me whether shall I go? I wish you could high five your neighbor, but just look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, the God. I serve her. He's still making ways. The God that I serve, he's still opening doors. The God that I serve, he's still in the blessing business. But wait a minute. I said, wait one minute. It's in your Bible. If you didn't tear it out, when she spoke, like she spoke, and Jesus said, Oh woman, great is your faith. The Bible says, from that very hour, her daughter was made whole. Do you know what that means? That while the mother was in the presence of Jesus, the power of God went to the address and cast out the demon. God told me to tell you that if you praise me in my presence, if you worship while you're with me, by the time you get back home, everything you praying for will already be done. Oh, shucks. Point at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, ain't no reason to pray about it. Ain't no reason to ask him for it. It's all ready done. It's all ready done. It's all ready done. It's all ready done. Fist bump your neighbor. I'm on my way out of here. But fist bump your neighbor and tell them neighbor, 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 whatever you're going through this too shall pass i can't hear y'all this too shall pass oh, this too This 
is what God is getting ready to do for you. Hold in your hand. God in your steps. Order in your ways. Is there anybody here can praise God when you get home? Hey, it'll be all right. I've seen the lightning flashing. Somebody better come grab me. I've heard the thunder roll. I felt seal breakers dashing trying to conquer my soul but I heard the voice of Jesus telling me still fight on I'm through and I tell you every mother keep on fighting every mother keep on lifting every mother keep on toiling cause I heard the voice of Jesus say everything is gonna be alright if you believe it throw your hand up throw your head back and shout yeah 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 yeah! 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 We out of here. But I need everybody that's got a baby. I want you to praise God for your child's future. I want you to pray. Is that the best you got for your son? Is that the best you got for your daughter? This next praise will determine if they give their life to Jesus. Your next praise will determine if they come home from jail. This next praise will determine if they get healed from a sickness. Lift him up. Lift him up. children's name in the atmosphere speak your son's name in the atmosphere speak your daughter's name in the atmosphere Lord do it for him Lord bless my child Lord bless my kids when they're not in my presence keep them from all hurt harm and danger they will not be killed by a police officer. Not another child is going to jail. Nobody will be strung out on dope. In the name of Jesus. 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 I receive it. I declare it. I'm saying it. I decree it in the name, in the name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your baby's going to be all right. I don't care how young or how old they are. If he's 40, he's still yours. If he's 50, he's still yours. 
she's still your daughter. When they stand before a judge, they're still yours. When they get pulled over, they're still yours. When they don't have a dime, they're still yours. If they're strung out on drugs, they're still yours. But God want me to tell you, if you come right before him, I'll take the bad taste out of their mouth and I'm getting ready, Lord Jesus, to fix their friendship circles. Your child will not be guilty by association. I speak the right kind of colleagues in their life. I declare the right friends over their life. Somebody that's been born again shall become your child's best friend. That when they need prayer, they'll pray for your baby. And when their friends need prayer, your son and your daughter will be over the phone and say, let's pray about it. I don't know a whole lot. <laughs> But I know one thing, prayer changes things, prayer changes things, yeah. prayer changes things, I hear some mother saying, I'm through, that problem that I had, I just couldn't seem to solve. I tried and I tried. Oh, I got deeper involved. But when I turned it, yeah, woo, over to Jesus, I stopped worrying about it. I gave it over to God, and He worked it out. Can I ask y'all a question? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he work it out? I'm out of here. But if there's any mother in the room ever prayed for your child and God came through for you, help me close this sermon point to anybody and say I know he will I'm a living witness I called on the Lord I called on the Lord I called on the Lord he wasn't too busy he answered my prayer <laughs> I'm a living witness he will. I'm a living witness he can. about to open the doors. Here's the last thing I want to tell you. Here's the last thing I want to tell you. Last thing I want to tell you. For every concerned parent, every concerned mother for the child, I'm going to drop this in your spirit. Drop this in your spirit. Drop this in your spirit, Miss Shelby. Miss Wayla. Here or Tootie. I'm going to drop this in your spirit, Miss Kelly. Cause, cause number one, cause number two. Drop this in your spirit. Every mother. Miss Bonnie, Miss Miller, Miss Tab, Tony. Toy, I want to say this. Y'all, please don't tear the club up. No kill. Good to see you today. Auntie, Mama, I want to say this. If God, destiny, would move on behalf of a mother who didn't even know him
a mother who wasn't saved, never been to church, and a daughter who didn't even know where her help came from, if he did it for them, I'm standing here telling you he will do it for you and for yours. Receive it today. I don't care what it looks like. He will do it for you and yours. You don't understand. My child 30. He will do it for you and yours. If there's any solace in some of you with young kids, the Bible says train up a child in the way it should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. I'm here to tell you you still got time because your child ain't old yet. They may be older, but they ain't old yet. And if God can call Moses at 40, and he don't lead him until he's 80. If God keep your child alive. You shall live to see the day that a change happens in their life. If I were you, I would receive that today. I pray that death will not claim them or you. Until you see your child living better. Till you see your child doing better. Till they call you talking to you about God. Having spiritual conversations with you. Teaching you stuff that you didn't know. And I'm not talking about all this other spiritual stuff. I'm talking about Christian believers. Who understand the finished works of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. It is so father I seal it until the day of redemption to the day of Jesus Christ we are confident in this one thing that thou who has begun a good work in us shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ it is so in Jesus name come on clap your hands one more time and give God praise today Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm excited about my kids' future. I don't know about you. I'm, I'm excited about your kids' future. I'm excited about yours. I'm excited about yours, man. I am excited. Yours not going to be another statistic. Yours is going to raise the bar in Jesus' name. Everybody ain't got to be a basketball player or a football player to be successful, to make some contribution. I speak doctors and lawyers and engineers and pastors and worship leaders and musicians. Not out in the world, but right in the body of Christ to the glory of God. In Jesus' name. Listen, if there's anybody in this room or anybody watching on Facebook, you've not given your life to Jesus Christ ever in your life this invitation is for you right now not only if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ but if you're looking for a church home this invitation is extended to you if you've given your life to Christ but you're looking for a church home if this ministry speaks down in your heart Jesus said the day that you hear my voice harder not your heart I will never beg a person to join my church I'll never ask him to do it ever that's not my place. That's out of order. You should be here if the Holy Spirit directs you here. If he tells you that I am your pastor, then you should connect with this place on today. He said, I will give you pastors after my own heart. So you don't choose your pastor. You discover who your pastor is because God gives them to you. I think I'm going to go to this church. I think I'm going to go to that church. That's you. Leaning on your own understanding. The Holy Spirit has to place you. I've been in my mom and them church. I've been in my grandma and them church all my life. I don't want nobody to feel no kind of way. 
but you're going to feel some kind of way if you don't get fed. I don't know what it is to starve, but I know what it is to be hungry. And if starving is any worse than being hungry, I don't think I would want to take that chance. You need to be in a place where you can be fed the word of God and it is rightly divided to you. If you are on Facebook or on YouTube, put in the comment section. If you're giving your life to Christ today, put it in the comment section. I give my life to Christ. I'll personally reach out to you. Welcome you into the body of Christ. If you decide, hey, your church is not the church I want to be a part of, that's fine. I don't mind you riding with one of my friends as long as we're going to the same heaven. Invitation is extended to you right now. But if you would like to be a part of our church family, if you're in this room or on Facebook, you can do that even right now. I would love to be your pastor. FCC would love to be your church family on today. Have you been blessed today by his word? Come on, clap your hands one more time and give God glory. Hey, all right, we are about to give in this room. You can still give your life to Christ. You can still give your membership here. Uh, but while we're doing that, we are also uh, receiving the Lord's offering. If you need an envelope, let us know. We'll get one to you. Let this be one of the givest bigging, one of the biggest giving days of the year. It's Mother's Day. Let's give God what is due to him as well. Uh, the way to give should be on the screen for you. You can text forward and the amount that you would like to give to 77977. Or you may cash out. Dollar sign, the number four, W-O-R-D-C-C. -C. Or dollar sign, number four, future home, number two, if you're giving to the building project. Any way you plant the seed in the ground, we're giving in this room. We're encouraging everybody to give. Nothing is too big. Nothing is too small. The $5 that you didn't think would make a difference, it'll make a $5 difference. Mm -hmm. If we take $10,995, your five would have made it 11. Come on. <laughs> so whatever you give will definitely bless the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Has everyone given that desire to give? Well, don't you, I don't want you to miss out on your opportunity. Okay, we see some giving envelopes now. We'll take a moment for every seed to get into the ground. If you want to give to Pastor's Love, you can do that as well. You can text forward in the amount that you would like to give to 77977. Just at the end of the amount, you can place the letters PL. For Pastor Love, if you're giving for building project, place the letters BP. And so our stewardship ministry will know exactly what you are trying to give towards. Thank you so much for those of you who share and you do it consistently. You do it consistently, weekly. Thank you so very, very much as you help to sustain me. And whatever you make happen for me, God will definitely make happen for you. Thank you. Has everyone given? All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you now for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and hearts have felt. Thank you for every gift, every giver. Bless those that gave, those that had a desire to give, but simply did not have it. Pray, God, that if they are willing to give, that you would give seed to a sower, and that when the time is presented again, that they will give. We thank you for all blessings in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Listen, before you leave, a couple of quick things. Um... One, don't miss Wednesday nights. Don't miss Wednesday nights. Wednesday night is where it's at. I'm telling you. Who, who, who checks out Wednesday nights? Okay. Wednesday nights be awesome. Wednesday nights be awesome. Okay. Then. You got to hype it up, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> 
that's how you get other people to connect. You got to hype it up. Uh, but you don't necessarily have to do that for real, for real. Our Wednesday night services are great. I know because I be teaching them. And that's how I know they good. <laughs> no intent of sarcasm. All right, but thank y'all so much for those of you who do check it out. And we are live in the building on Avenue B, so you're more than welcome to come uh, over there. It's real nice and comfortable and cozy over there. If you hadn't seen it since we stopped doing our services over there, it's really nice. I want you to come by and take a look at it. And the air is working like Jesus Christ. Lord, have mercy. Blessed Father, in his name, ain't nothing like good air in Jesus' name. That's one of the reasons I know I'm going to heaven. I don't like being hot like that. I ain't like being hot like that, boy. I'm telling you. So get right or get left. That's what the old folk used to say. All right. Love y'all. I pray that you have a blessed rest of the day and that the Spirit of God will just be with you. Don't forget, every day, Monday through Friday, join me for Monday uh, for daily inspiration, daily motivation every day at 8 a.m. The number is 319 527 Two two seven two. If you're available to get on and you ain't been getting on, I don't know what's wrong with you. It'll be the best thing for you every day. So be sure to call me every day. All right. Love y'all. Let's stand. <clears throat> now unto him who is able to keep you from falling present you faultless before the presence of his glory, the exceeding great joy, the King immortal, invincible, the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And all God's children said, Amen. God bless you.